Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound, and today we're taking a look at the Young Hands Meister Pilot Chronograph Vintage Version. This is a watch that was officially released at uh, Basel 2016, though had been sort of previewed before that with a special edition version of the watch that was uh, created just for an event. When that came out, we wrote about it. There was a lot of excitement for it, and um, I think uh, people were uh, a little upset that they thought it was only going to be available for that event. So <clears throat> we were all very excited to see at Basel that it was um, just going to be uh, part of their line. There's two versions of the watch. The vintage version here, which has a slightly browner, more brown loom, and the non-vintage version, which has a brighter green loom. Otherwise, they're nearly identical. Um, but the watch itself is a very cool watch and a bit of a departure from what Young Hands has been doing recently. So it's part of their Meister line, but it is uh, kind of a departure, like, like I said, from that line as well. And what this is is based on a watch that they made in, uh, starting in 1955, and which was a military issue pilot chronograph called the J88. Um, amongst the kind of vintage pilot or you know, military chronographs that are out there, you know, of, of which there are, there are plenty. Uh, this one definitely kind of stands out aesthetically, but it's also one that's not talked about as much. So it's one that you might not have been aware existed, but when you look it up or see a photo of it, you'll see it has some very cool, uh, distinct aesthetics, which they picked up uh, from uh, and brought into this new model. That said, this isn't really a recreation of it. It's really just inspired by that, that version, uh, most particularly in the interesting scalloped bezel here and some of the case uh, details. But overall, it is a relatively new design, just inspired by that vintage military look. Um, and that is, you know, for young hands, they don't really have a lot of military watches. So in that way, it is a bit of a departure for them. But what they do with this watch is just, it's extremely gorgeous. It's very unique, very sculptural looking watch with some really great features. And it pulls also from their modern Meister line too with some great dial detailing that we'll get into. Um, it's powered by an automatic uh, chronograph, the caliber J880.4. We've seen a similar movement before in the Meister telemeter chronograph. So that was the 880.3. Uh, that one was a 2892, the Dubois de Pra 2030 module. Um, I don't know what the exact difference is between the 0.3 and the 0.4 version, but all of the uh, functionality is exactly the same. So I think it's a very, very similar situation here. Um, it's made in Germany, as all young are. And this one comes at a bit of a higher price at 2465 though that is still, I believe, a fairly uh, great price for a watch of this build quality, um, as well as just design sensibility. So let's take a closer look. The case of the Meister Pilot Chronograph is uh, really striking. And um, I think Young Hands it does actually exceptional cases uh, on all of their watches, uh, especially in the Meister line. They have just nice detailing, interesting geometry. But this one really takes the, uh, takes the cake, so to speak, with both finishing um, and just interesting detailing all around. So the first off, the size of it, it's a 43 millimeter diameter by 49.5 by 14.5 millimeters tall. So it's a wide watch, though not terribly long, but it is quite thick as well. I'm gonna show you from the side, you'll see though, it's bowl shaped, which does help uh, kind of mitigate that. Um, but the size is a, is a large increase over what the J88 would have, and so this is immediate departure. Um, I think sometimes, you know, you get this kind of immediate gripe, and I've, you know, been guilty of this as well, of like, oh, well, they took a vintage watch and they made it much larger. But like I said, they're really kind of making a new watch here, just drawing from some of those aesthetics. And while it's big, it kind of makes sense. Visually, when you see this watch, it doesn't look oversized. Uh, it, you know, the larger size allows them to put more emphasis on this really cool bezel here and some of the cool uh, lug shapes going on. I mean, the scallop bezel is extremely unique and a really striking design. So had it been smaller, it might not have uh, had the same impact. Um, also, the dial itself, just big, expansive, but it's all laid out very well with the, uh, you know, the sub dials where they should be, which we'll talk about in a bit later. Um, so yeah, looking at this bezel now, it is a friction fit bezel, so it's not ratcheting. Uh, it has the smoothest glide to it I've ever felt. It is like, it's tight, so it doesn't, you know, it's not loose, it's not gonna slip around, um, but it moves, you know, with, a, with just enough effort and it just feels so nice. Like there's not a hint of grittiness or anything in there. It's uh, like a real kind of like 
it's very enjoyable to do that, which is uh, just always fun. Um, and the design of it is fantastic with these scallops, and then you have the numerals uh, and markers kind of riding in between those scallops, uh, the lines coming out at these points here, a little loom pip there at a 0, 060. It's really beautiful. And then the finishing uh, kind of emphasizes it even more. So you have radial finishing on the top and then horizontal finishing within each scallop. And that's just really beautiful in person as well. You'll also notice from the top that the um, lugs are pretty dramatic. So they're long and they curl around and they actually aren't straight. They don't come out quite straight from the lug itself. So there's actually a little bit of a curve here as the case, uh, as the like, um, excuse me, as the lug becomes 22 millimeters. So it's a little bit wider in there. And that's really just an interesting detail, very uh, curious looking in person. I really like it, just adds kind of motion and flow to the design. And then on the lug itself also you have this wide bevel and everything has a slightly different finishing direction on it. It's all brushed, but like the brushing here is straight, the brushing here goes this way, the brushing on the side then goes that way. And that's all just beautiful and dramatic looking. Um, and you know, just speaks to obviously this watch being a kind of, you know, a high end piece. Looking at it from the side now, you can see uh, how, just how dramatic it, it is as well. So the lugs further have just tons of contours on them. You can really see how that finishing comes out. Uh, really beautiful, and you can see how the case itself is all a bowl shape. Um, like I said, the Meister line does that, but here, because it's actually even thicker, um, it's more dramatic, as well as having this quite tall bezel on there. Um, so it's just, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a cool design, just very atypical, but the way they do these things to kind of uh, follow the, the uh, geometry of the movement, so the way the rotor is kind of uh, stacked on the back of the movement rather than having it all be a slab makes it wear a lot better and I think just look a lot cooler. Um, one thing actually while I'm on the side that is very worth noting is that the crystal here is sapphire. Uh, one thing that people often complain about with young hands is that they use plexiglass crystals on a lot of their watches. I happen to like plexiglass crystals, they add some charm to a watch, but here they went with sapphire, a dome sapphire with a, uh, AR coating. So you are gonna have that, you know, just standard amount of scratch resistance there. Looking at the case back, uh, you can see the, the, the back itself is, is fairly simple, but with some nice decoration on it. It's held on by a bunch of screws here. Then you have a mix of matte and polish to create this kind of interesting etched star. Uh, not too dramatic, not too crazy, just a simple case back, but I, I happen to like the way it looks. Um, but what's really also nice from the back is that you can see uh, the geometry of the, the pushers and the crown a lot more. So the pushers, which are oblong shape uh, rather than just round, feed onto these large pistons, and it's actually just the kind of cap of that pusher that pushes down, um, which you can just see how that actuates there. The crown then has a kind of flaring in the back as it goes into this uh, structure here. It's just all really beautiful. I mean, very cool, very industrial looking details that uh, I personally just really, really like the look of. The dial of the Meister Pilot Chronograph uh, definitely draws from the J88 source material, but has some differences as well. I mean, the overall uh, layout uh, is definitely very similar. It has a, you know, a two register chronograph design large uh, numerals going around and an index on the outside. Uh, but the finer points, the shape of the numbers themselves uh, have changed. Uh, so looking at the dial now, the surface itself is a satin black and it's domed. Um, this is really gives it that feeling of the Young Hans Meister line. And it's a beautiful dial. There's something about the sheen of it that just feels really clean and how it curls down just a little bit towards the edge, which actually the minute hand and second hand follow a little bit. They just curve a little bit. Those are details like I just absolutely uh, adore and I think really give some sculptural presence to the Young Hands watches that a lot of uh, watches don't. Um, and looking at this primary index now, you have uh, large you know, numerals for the hours in this kind of uh, vintage sort of loom. Um, the other model has a slightly more modern looking uh, loom to it. I think it's a little funny that they had two such similar versions, whereas, you know, perhaps doing one like this and one with a silver dial, one with a white dial would have been kind of a larger difference, but whatever. Uh, this one, you know, I think looks just fine as it is. 
Um, the numeral typeface here is quite uh, interesting. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, I think it's attractive, but it's definitely not one that you, you know, is reminiscent of anything I've seen quite before. Just the way the numbers are kind of wide, uh, just how the, the numerals kind of curl around. It has kind of a funny look to it, but it's, it's a cool look and it's very present. It's very legible. Uh, the outer index then is a you know, minute second index, um, or rather minute chronograph second index. Uh, what I really like about this is that it's actually silver print. There's a little bit of a metallic sheen to all of those numerals, uh, which just looks, I think, a lot more interesting than uh, a, a flat gray would have looked or even a white would have looked. And definitely also just plays off of the kind of vintage feeling to it, like uh, something's, it's a little more metal, it's a little more, I don't know, uh, just uh, rusty or something. Um, Looking now at the subdials, you have 60 second subdial on the right side, 30 minute subdial on the left, so the classic uh, kind of chronograph layout here. Um, one thing to note, once again, about the Young Hans Meister series is just the way they execute subdials is exceptional. I've seen this on uh, most of the other Meister series we've talked about, especially the Meister telemeter chronograph. Rather than just stepping down, they kind of scoop in, so they're sort of inverted domes within the dome dial. It gives you an extremely crisp line and then a very smooth curve, and it's absolutely beautiful. They also know how to proportion their subdials really well. So here they're quite large. They go all the way out to the edge here, but that's how it should be. It should really fill in that space. You don't get that sort of uh, cross-eyed look you sometimes get when uh, uh, subdials are too small, nor do you have some awkward spacing between them and the edge of the dial. And like I said before, you know, the dial size itself uh, is given, it's given a lot of real estate because the watch itself is fairly wide. So uh, that just all plays into, I think, just, you know, very good, uh, well thought out layout. Uh, looking now at the hands on the watch, you have a variation on Roman sword hands. Uh, if you look at the hour in particular, you can see that the first curve on that is actually concave and the second curve is uh, convex. So they have, it's a little bit more ornate than your typical Roman sword. Uh, I think it looks really nice. Uh, the minute hand, like I said, curls down a little bit. Uh, rather than polished steel here, you have brushed steel, which I think is, is also just a nice touch, goes toward the rug, rugged feeling, plays off of the case brushing a little bit. Second hand is a thin stick with a very, very small loomed arrow at the end. One really interesting thing about this uh, second hand um, is that the counterweight is actually applied as well. So it steps up a little bit before there's this little, almost coffin-shaped counterweight at the end. Um, it's a very, very subtle detail, uh, but I, I noticed it and I, was, I just thought that that was interesting. The hands on the subdials then, also quite attractive. Um, they're just arrow pointers, but they slender and they taper, give it a little bit more of an aggressive look. Um, overall though, I think the aesthetic here is just really attractive. And what I like about it more is that, you know, once again, you know, it's based on a mid-century pilot's watch, pilot's chronograph, military chronograph. That's a concept we've seen a lot of from a lot of different brands, but this doesn't look like anyone else's. So Young Hands did a really good job of kind of keeping it uh, feeling Young Hands. On the wrist, the Young Hands Meister Pilot chronograph, uh, I think it wears very well, but like I said, it is a large watch. So you definitely have to approach it as such. But uh, for me, uh, it really reminded me of uh, Hoyer Bundesphere or more uh, precisely the SIN 156, which is a watch that I've owned, which is also 43 millimeters. So there is sort of a, a context for this larger size German uh, pilot uh, kind of chronograph. So keeping with that, it just, it felt right. Um, and it, like I said, the proportions work out so that it doesn't look oversized or it doesn't look, you know, inflated in any way. It is much larger than the original version, but it isn't a remake of the original version. They weren't really going for that. Uh, they were going for a new pilot's watch with these historical elements. And in that context, and also in the context, I think, of their line of being a more aggressive military piece, a sport piece, a pilot watch, um, it makes sense for it to be one of their larger watches rather than one of their smaller watches. Obviously, with the Max Bill watches, they get quite small. So, you know, they have a full range here, this being towards the top. Um, and it fits well. I mean, the most important dim uh, dimension for me is always lug to lug. 49.5 fits on my wrist as well. I have a seven inch wrist and it, the way it kind of curls down a little bit also just keeps that hugging the wrist. Um, and then you just have a very expansive dial. You know, it's, it's, it, it's bold, it looks big. 
um, but it's not uh, like over the top of my wrist or anything like that. So it's not like a super bulky dive watch or anything like that. In fact, the watch doesn't really feel bulky. I guess that's, that's a big part of it. Though it is tall at 14.5 millimeters, that undercut case design really uh, goes a long way towards making it just feel more lithe, more nimble. Um, so you don't feel like you're just wearing some oversized masculine, you know, crazy watch. Um, aesthetically though, I mean, this is a bold, aggressive piece, but it really doesn't look like anything else out there. It's, it's really gorgeous. It's just like a striking watch. It's one of those watches when you wear it, you're gonna be looking at your wrist probably a little bit too much. Just the way light hits all these scallops, the way the light plays off the brushing, uh, these oversized pushers here, you know, playing with those throughout the day. It's just, it's a really tactile, very cool, just like just a watch that begs to be touched and looked at. And it's stylish too. You know, I wear fairly casual clothing. I think it looks really good with it. Obviously, it's not a dress watch. I wouldn't wear it as such, but you know, I think you could pull it off in an office setting um, with the right you know, clothing around it. Um, for strap, it comes on a vintage style uh, leather strap, kind of a vintage pilot style. It's 22 millimeters at the lugs where they actually meet, but as I said, they get a little wider from there, but it would take a 22 millimeter. Um, smartly, they went with a very tapered 22 millimeter, so it starts here, but it very quickly comes down uh, to 20, if not even actually a little bit smaller. And that continues this flow from the case down the wrist, which looks really good. I think also helps with the feeling of the watch, the wearability. Um, and it's a cool looking strap. You know, I have to, I have to commend them for trying something a little bit different here. Um, you'll see it is two-tone, so it's black by the lug uh, with two rivets in it, and that kind of goes around and, and uh, essentially holds the spring bar through this flap of leather. Then you have contrast stitching go around. Um, and you know, it's a well-made strap, it's not too thick, it's comfortable. And then you have a kind of a, a distinct buckle design here with some interesting curves on it, little young hand star, all brushed. Uh, once again, it goes well with the watch. Um, I believe the other version actually is all black, but I think this is cool that it's black and brown. Like I'd rather, definitely rather have something a little bit weirder and more exciting as the strap that comes with the watch, because you can always put whatever else on it, um, than just to have a, a, you know, a straight up black strap. So very cool option here. And it works with the design. I mean, obviously the rivets and everything play off of the case, give it a nice, you know, rugged and aggressive look. To wrap up, uh, Young Hands did a, an, ex an exceptional job with the Meister Pilot Chronograph, um, and that's you know no surprise. We've only seen great watches from the brand. There's a reason why they have such a big following and have been around so long. Uh, they have an attention to detail that a lot of brands don't. They also have a sense of uh, design that I think a lot of brands don't. You know, they're detailing, they're uh, proportioning. Um, simple things like the fact that they didn't cram a date window somewhere where we didn't want it on this watch, that all just adds up to a better experience, a more refined looking watch. Um, and in this case, one of the more successful, I think, kind of a, uh, in reinterpretations of a classic military watch or a vintage watch, even if it is a lot larger than the original was, you know, they're not going for one for one recreation. They don't call it the J88. They just call it their Meister Pilot. So they, but they take from, you know, this great thing from their archives and they really take the best elements from there, particularly that beautiful scalloped bezel, which is striking. You know, it's if anything, it might be a divisive kind of a, uh, element. It might be just too much for some people. I think it's absolutely exceptional and a detail I wouldn't change uh, in a million years, but you know, it's, it's gnarly looking. Um, so yeah, you know, with the movement in here, the Caliber J880.4, which is a 2892 with a Dwadapra module, most likely, um, you know, you have good insights there. Price tag of 2465 certainly not inexpensive, but I think this is very much priced uh, in accordance to their other watches, as well as competitively, uh, you know, for a watch of this type, you know. Um, so is it worth saving for? You know, I think so. If this, like, the aesthetic here is really uh, compelling you, you're not going to find it elsewhere. And obviously, it's an extremely high quality watch. Uh, so please read the full review on Worn and Wound. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you.